Hello, how are you? My name is Alejandro Sandoval and this is the Solo Negocios video blog for July the 4th, 2018 with the summary of the Solo Negocios volume. Today, the Mexican peso got appreciated again and this was due to a the holiday in the US with low volume uh, traded in markets globally and the Bloomberg dollar spot went down 0.12%. Uh, oil went up. There are several elements, for example, the cut on, some, on supply from Canada, the decrease in inventories in the US given that situation, a cut uh, not expected in Nigeria, the military situation in Libya, and that OPEC will not need necessarily the uh, increase in production sufficiently to avoid these cuts and these situations, and including the sanctions against Iran that is being put and lobbied by the US with other allies. Iran answers and states that the, at least the European Union will have a great deal of problems, inflationary problems, because of those cuts in exports from Iran. In terms of internal information, Andres Manuel López Obrador met with the uh, Coordinated Council of the Business uh, Groups in Mexico, and also Carlos Ursúa stated, who will be the Minister of Finance, stated that the average exchange rate for 2019 will be 19 pesos per dollar. The support for the US dollar today was 19, 19 pesos with 15 cents per dollar, resistance 20 pesos with 25 cents per dollar in the wholesale market. The spread between the banking uh, exchange rate was 1.10 pesos, diminishing 2 cents respect to yesterday, and also yesterday occurred the same thing. So there's a little trend of uh, lesser volatility internally. Um, well, the, tomorrow we have the Fed and Bank of Mexico uh, minutes and there are possible tensions in the trade war that is being going on on Friday. It's a due date for the US to initiate the second round of tariffs against China and potential China, China re 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 uh, retaliation. And well, what will happen is to keep tensions up and probably there will be a downgrade for the peso tomorrow. Uh, in terms of the meeting with Mr. López Obrador and the Business Council, there was a member of, I, of IMEF and he sent us to members uh, in the whole organization a small summary of what he heard and how he perceived the, the meeting. But th the main thing is that he perceived that there's like conciliation with positions. Uh, he is uh, stating for public finances that they will be working with economic equilibrium respect to the Banco, Banco de Mexico autonomy and we work with uh, what they will earn. I mean, the revenue will be spent, not else. So that means not debt for Mexico in his term, we hope so. They will work with economic development along the private sector beginning with tourism and not necessarily specifically with the current tourist sites like Cancun or the Riviera Maya, but also other sites like the Mayan site from Tabasco to Campeche, a train specifically, other sites in Chiapas, Oaxaca and other regions. He will always take into account the social sector with opinions and even inviting them as partners for projects. Uh, he wants to provide a social dimension to the business activity. And this is interesting because the Business Council, along other organizations like FECHAC in the state of Chihuahua, work a lot over social responsibility. So if they match, this might work well. He is planning to work with uh, trees. He wants to uh, provide a lot of seeds in the southeast for fruits and and would uh, increase the production of those uh, subsectors. In terms of communication at the Tehuantepec the ISM, uh, there, well, there's a plan within, uh, well, there's a long-term plan for that matter when, when the Panama Canal was built. Well, now it's being worked by Mexico, but I, I remember as a child to have heard uh, about that information, but now he wants to, to increase that potential and build something about it there. Uh, increase expenditure or investment in ports and provide fiscal incentives to that area. He will prefer national investment, but will be open to worldwide investment. Also will be, be giving preferences to countries with less corruption indexes as one of his 
uh, at least for the endogenous part, the main promises in campaign, uh, within the relationship with the U.S. and the negotiation of the NAFTA, he will respect the current team negotiating and will work along them during the transition. I mean, Trump already said that he's willing to sign the, the deal in November after the, their election, so that implies that the negotiation will take place from now until November, and well, in that time the current president is Peña Nieto, so he has to do it, but it's good that he is recognizing their job. Uh, he's looking forward to build up a program to help young people in Mexico, along with businessmen. He wants to have a meeting with businesses and this business council every three months and make an agreement on salaries. He doesn't want Trump to uh, pass them over with NAFTA negotiation. We have to work with, with that topic, uh, given it our own interest. He wants to diminish uh, regulation economic relation that's interesting and never said before by his group. Uh, he wants to attack corruption as a priority. Uh, we'll work with uh, people with seniority over topics like security and violence. He will not be against someone specifically like persecuting or uh, vengeance. And well, there's worry by the business council because the 2.3 million job that will be received this scholarship for 3,600 persons per month, it's almost $400 million a month. So that's a, a, a tax issue, a well, budget issue, and well, that will be discussed. He said that he's not going to become a dictator and that he wants people to help him to stand on, on, on earth and that he will not get crazy with power. So basically, he's looking forward to provide confidence by the markets and with the markets and with the businessmen. And well, it seems that it's working at least at this first meeting. This is the information we have. We'll have more information tomorrow. We'll see you soon.